Nice. Welcome to Action Packed, where we look at action movies and find out just how packed they are. Today we'll be taking a look at the 2008 Bullet Fest Wanted, starring James McAvoy. Actually, this movie's whole main cast is pretty awesome. Along with McAvoy, we get Angelina Jolie, Morgan Freeman, Common, and even a little Chris Pratt, too. Wanted is loosely based on a comic book of the same name created by Mark Miller and J.G. Jones. Mark Miller probably the more notable of the two, as he also created the Kick-Ass series. Essentially, how Wanted got made was a Universal Pictures executive was a fan of the comic and brought it back to his homies in the boardroom like, yo, you guys gotta check this shit out. To make the creation of this movie even weirder, Russian director Tamur Bekmambatov was chosen for the movie because of his unique visual style. Wanted would mark Bekmambatov's first ever American film, though. All his movies before this were Russian, so Universal really kinda took a chance here. And Bekmambatov would also choose to use his own Russian Russian video effects company for Wanted, meaning that even now it stands as a unique action movie visually. Wanted follows protagonist and generally normal dude Wesley Gibson, as he finds out he's not a generally normal dude at all, actually. Wesley is recruited into what's called the Fraternity, a secret organization of assassins who kill certain people to keep the world in order. It's all for the greater good, they promise. Throughout the movie, Wesley uncovers more of the Fraternity's history and its ties to his own family. We also get some crazy action along the way. A sequel seemed like the obvious step, but from everything I can find, the writing for the second movie just never took off. Which is weird because Wanted made lots of money, making 342 million revenue on a 75 million dollar budget. So keep your eyes peeled out there for a fresh Wanted drop, should be any time now. Will the action give us what we wanted? Let's start the movie and find out. The movie begins with some expository texts, like they always say in film school. Don't show what you can just make them read. There was actually a really cool opening sequence shot for this, but it went unused. I really don't know why, it's much better than reading. I'll leave a link to it in the description if you want to watch it. First thing, we meet protagonist Wesley Gibson, a pretty stressed out generic office worker. This dude just pretty much hates everything about life. To be fair, his boss really sucks, his girlfriend also also really sucks. She's cheating on him with his best friend Barry, played by Chris Pratt, so he sucks. It all sucks. This, this really sucks. We leave Wesley complaining about life to meet a new character, Mr. X, a high-ranking assassin within the fraternity. Before this cut, Wesley is thinking about his father, so this cut here is for us to put together that Mr. X is Wesley's father. This is a fairly important insinuation to the movie, so I thought I'd explain. Mr. X is at this building to see a woman named Pooja, who must have answers about this mysterious bullet Mr. X has. But before Pooja can really offer anything as a character to the story, she has her head blown off. She gave us the information we were looking for, at least, giving us our first counting of the episode. These guys over here really fucked up. I mean, this guy's name is Mr. X. You don't just have a name like Mr. X. He did something to get that name. This is our first taste of the stylistic choices in this movie, with Mr. X just kind of going full superhuman. He literally just jumps over to the other roof where these other assassins are. We get three quick kills to add as he just starts getting headshots immediately mid-air. Turn off the aimbot, please. You're ruining the game. We even get a curved bullet kill here too, so hacks confirmed. A fourth kill can be added for the last guy who thought, hmm, maybe he went home? Ominously, this last guy's phone starts ringing, and on the other end is a man named Cross, a former member of the fraternity who's gone rogue, and who's tricked the almighty Mr. X into standing on an X. Really? Are we here? Really? Cross gets a crazy headshot on Mr. X, adding him to our kills and giving us another great shot here. From there, we meet back up with Wesley again, waking up and getting back to his terrible life. His boss, Janice, is giving him crazy panic attacks that slow down time and that give us widely recognizable clips. Even his ATM is giving him the option to go fuck himself. Ah, oh, man, don't hit correct on that, man. After another terrible day with Wesley, we finally get around to meeting Angelina Jolie's character, Fox, another high-ranking 
assassin within the fraternity. She abruptly introduces herself by telling Wesley his father was killed by, coincidentally, that guy right there behind you, actually. Fox saves Wesley from Cross's ambush, giving us a small but totally countable explosion to add as she shoots this propane tank. Quick shout out to the video cam rotating pistol mount, by the way. What is that? That's wild, and then we never see it again. This leads us into our first chase scene of the movie, as Cross really seems to have it in for Wesley. Even though we go all around town, Cross is unsuccessful, with Fox and Wesley getting away to the fraternity's hideout. Just when he thinks he's out of the woods, Wesley is then confronted by the fraternity, and told to shoot the wings off of a fly or be killed. I mean, that's an easy choice. You try, right? Because you die either way, so... Wesley ends up shooting the wings off successfully. He must have really liked shooting that pistol. Anyway, Wesley does the whole panic thing, but this confirms that his anxiety attacks that slow down time... Yeah, that's not anxiety. That's called magic powers, Wesley. Yeah, that's superpowers. So even though Wesley knows he has powers now, he tries to go back to work, but pretty much immediately loses his mind. Exploding at Janice, his boss, even though she totally deserves it, and smashing this keyboard over Chris Pratt's face, even though he totally deserves it. It's important for us to note that Wesley lives in a movie, however. So when he's finished assaulting his co-workers and leaving his steady paycheck behind, he just heads downstairs and gets picked up by Angelina Jolie. Cool! Wesley jumps right into hanging out with the fraternity, getting his skills up. Throughout these scenes, we're introduced to all the high-ranking members of the fraternity. There's Sloan, the leader, played by Morgan Freeman. There's the repairman, who, I guess, fixes stuff with his fists. Uh, his main thing is that he beats Wesley up a lot. We got the butcher, who, as you would probably assume, is a knife's expert. There's the gunsmith, who, as you would probably also assume, is the guns guy. He's played by Common. He teaches Wesley how to do fancy things, like shoot guns and bend physics at your will. The bullet bending in this movie is, of course, one of the classic wanted elements. It's the only thing I remembered about this movie, really. We also have Konstantin Kabensky as the exterminator, who's a weird Russian guy who straps bombs to rats. Kabensky actually works with Tamur Bekmambatov quite often and appears in most of his movies, so this is kind of a cool easter egg casting. And then lastly, of course, there's Fox, who's played by Angelina Jolie. Anyways, Wesley goes through all this hazing from each member. Everybody kind of seems like a dick, except for Fox and the Exterminator. The Exterminator becoming enough of a pal to tell Wesley all about his rat bombs, like I mentioned earlier. He gives us a quick explosion to add as he shows us how it works. Five, four, three, two, one. We also get a cutaway here to the gunsmith and Sloan seeing a body being loaded into the fraternity. This dead character is actually a bigger character in the graphic novel named Mr. Rictus. He's only briefly mentioned here as a victim of Cross, but since he's kind of a cool easter egg also, I'll count him. Get up there, buddy, yeah. Wesley, unfortunately being beaten over the head for however long now, starts having some kind of mental breakdown. Fox, unfortunately overhears some office gossip between the exterminator and Wesley. Wesley? Wesley's all, wow, this place is fucked up, huh? And the exterminator is like, yeah. Fox leaves and Wesley realizes he messed up. Uh, but Fox is really angry and she just beats Wesley up a lot. It forces Wesley to reveal that his anger is actually coming from a place of being lost, beaten to the point of therapy. Brutal. But that's what they wanted to hear, I guess, because the beating stops and Sloane gets Wesley pumped and explains that a fraternity traitor, Cross, is the man who killed his father. Wesley now realizes his life's meaning is to kill Cross, so his motivation is super high. And Sloane decides Wesley is worthy of seeing the Loom of Fate, a big old weaver that punches out names onto a cloth by itself. No red flags there at all. And then Sloane, like, gets a name off of the stitch and then he goes and kills somebody. Wesley is pretty conflicted, as I mean, who wouldn't be? This guy could just be making all this shit up. Like, you don't know. Like, I didn't even know what a loom was before this. Wesley is successful in his first contract, though, adding Robert Darton to our kills. He even had a name. Back in the healing baths again, lots of 
peeling baths shots. Fox gives us a bit of backstory. We learn Fox's father was killed by a man who should have been killed by the fraternity, but because the member didn't do it, it ripple affected into her becoming a stone cold assassin and also having a dead dad. We see the flashback as Fox is telling us about this, so I'll add her father to the count as well. This sort of eases Wesley's conflictedness. I guess he really just wants to get Cross's name pulled, so he just kind of keeps going. At his second contract now, we get a quick chase to add onto this one right away as Wesley and Fox roll up to the target. It's a small one, but all chase scenes are important on this show. The only opening to get this dude is his sunroof, so we kind of get a sweet car flip shot kill to add to. After another successful mission, Wesley and Fox head to Wesley's old place. Wesley is stopping by to pick up a gun he hid in the bathroom earlier in the movie, and to assault Barry again. Hi, Star-Lord. Anyways, Fox kind of gets a glimpse into Wesley's life before the fraternity here, and she's like, let me just fix that up real quick. Is she Wesley? Your new whore? Is that what it takes now? You're paying for it? Whoa! After burning the place down, Wesley and Fox go outside, but Wesley immediately spots Cross just casually watching them, I guess. Like, just right there, out in the open. We get another chase scene to add, of course, because Wesley goes after Cross. Wesley is actually really fucked up, because he gets surprised by the exterminator and shoots him immediately. The whole frat then shows up, and they're all confused on why the exterminator is even there, and why he's bleeding from the mouth. Hey, uh, Wesley, you got anything on that? Cross is able to escape, shooting Wesley and knocking him out, but unfortunately, Wesley comes to just in time to watch the exterminator die. His last words, the amount of subscribers I thought I'd have by now. That adds the exterminator to our kills. After yet another traumatizing failure, Wesley says enough is enough and tracks down a lead on Cross. He knows who makes those fancy bullets we saw earlier in the movie, a man named Pekworski. Wesley finds his way to Pekworski, who has his own loom and all that stuff too, because they, these guys, that's what they're all about, man. Pekworski gets the better of Wesley here. This would have been the end of the movie, but Fox saves Wesley with a sneaky sneak of her own, and Pekworski then agrees to arrange a meeting with Cross so they don't kill him. We immediately go to a train station where Pekworski has arranged to meet Cross. Fox and Wesley remain hidden to ambush, but Pekworski flees because of course he does, you guys. You think he's just gonna hang out there alone? This adds another small chase scene for us as Wesley and Fox go after Pekworski. Pekworski is able to get away because Wesley senses Cross on the train. Fox notices Wesley jump on the train and goes full GTA on these people stealing their car. And this adds another chase scene for us as Fox and Wesley are now chasing Cross. Cross ambushes Wesley on the train and they have a bit of a tussle. We get a cool bullet duel in this one. I kind of wish there was more of this stuff in the movie because this is like awesome. Fox sees this happening and levels the whole situation up a bit by crashing her damn car right into the side of the train. The train hits a tunnel though, and with a car sticking out of the side of it, you can probably guess that doesn't help. The car collides with the tunnel, causing the train to lose balance, and yeah, here we go. We get a whole bunch of counting to do because this was a passenger train, and it just falls off the side of this random crevasse. I found out Wesley and Fox are in the second last train car, so what I'm gonna do is count everybody Wesley passes while he's climbing to safety, and then half it, I guess, and add that as the total for these unfortunate people who just disappear into darkness. Altogether, Wesley climbs past 10 other passengers, adding 10 kills to our list because all these train cars fall into darkness eventually. That means on this last car we saw fall, I'll say there were five people on it. Just to be fair, I don't know. Wesley almost makes it to safety, but his sweaty fingies are his foil. But Cross comes in clutch and saves his life. Well, he just saved your life, Wesley. You know, maybe he isn't so bad. Oh, okay, you shoot him right in the chest. And then the train car thereon falls too. They're both still alive though, cause main character stuff. Cross literally seconds from death finally finds the words he's been looking for for like over an hour now. You're my son. That's right, this is actually our big reveal. Cross was Wesley's dad the whole time, and the fraternity played Wesley against him because they knew he was the only one Cross wouldn't kill. <laughs> Oh my god! That adds Cross to our kills. Fox then pops up to confirm that, yeah, 
Wesley got played and goes to tie up her own contract, which is him. Wesley is able to shoot out the glass underneath him and Cross, though, and they escape. Falls in the darkness and he lands in some water. We cut to a healing bath, because of course we do. And this is actually in Cross's old hideout. How he got saved is forever a mystery, I guess. Pekworski is there too and explains how essentially Cross lived like right across the street from Wesley and stalked him his whole life because he thought it was safer that way. More creepy, but safer. So yeah, Sloan and the fraternity were the baddies the whole time. Pekworski explains Sloan has just been killing whoever because his own name came up on the loom. The fraternity wanted Cross dead because Cross was the only one holding the original code and he wanted to kill Sloan. After pacing around and being shirtless for a weirdly extended time, Wesley puts his dad's old jacket on and finds a hidden room in his closet. The room is filled with research on rat bombs, the exterminator. He was, he was working with Cross too. He was a good guy. Wesley, now equipped with the truth and some crazy demolition rat science, gets ready to make one final push on the fraternity, which is him just casually backing up this garbage truck through their front door. This initial scene <laughs> seems really chill, like oddly. Sloane's just playing like hickory do with his finger strings and he drops like a half annoyed like, kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Wesley crashing through was only part one of his plan though, as he hits the unload button for the garbage truck, dumping hundreds of rats into the fraternity. Now obviously we all know these little guys are gonna explode, but I'm only counting explosions we see on camera. This means all together in this rat bomb pandemonium we get 21 explosions to add. Wesley dumping a bunch of rat bombs into the fraternity was only part two of his plan, as he starts getting all jacked up and heads right on inside and just immediately starts adding more to our numbers. He gets 31 kills in this first half before the moment is broken up by a meeting with the repairman. I bet this fight's gonna be epic. Oh, he just shoots him in the head? Oh, okay. That adds the repairman to our list. And then Wesley just keeps going, using the repairman as a human shield and adding an additional 11 fraternity grunts to the count. Wesley breaks away from all the low-level plebs and he finds his way to another boss, the Butcher, who uses his meat cooler to hide and slash at Wesley a few times. This whole scene is set up super well, but Wesley ends their confrontation in one of the dumbest ways possible, probably. The Butcher stabs the end of Wesley's gun and the knife gets stuck and then Wesley like shoots the butcher with the knife that's stuck in the gun and then he like spin kicks it man i don't know that adds the butcher to our count in definitely the lamest kill of the movie from here wesley finally makes it to the final boss sloan and fox and the gunsmith Oh, okay, everybody's just here. Wesley lays it down flat and tells everybody the truth about Sloane. Sloane admits to everything, but tells each member they had their own names drawn from the loom also, so he was really saving them all. I was just checking up on, uh, who's a giant loser and... Your name. With that information, it looks like the members are all about to say screw the code and just kill Wesley. But Fox has his ass covered one last time and shoots the classic bullet bender all the way around this room, headshotting each remaining member of the fraternity, including herself. For the count here, each member came out from behind a beam and earlier it shows the whole room with 11 beams. So I'll count nine for the nameless fraternity grunts, one for the gunsmith, and then one for Fox as well. Sloan makes a smooth getaway with all the commotion, leaving his loom room looking like a disaster. Is that right? Is loom room right? It sounds right. We cut to Wesley back at his cubicle. Can you believe it? They hired him back. I don't believe it actually. As you might have guessed, that's not actually Wesley. Sloan shows up here hoping to get a cheeky revenge kill. I feel like Sloan kind of goes full noob here last second. This is a super vanilla catch, man. Throughout the movie, he's portrayed as cunning and calculated. I just don't buy it for his character. Wesley gets a big headshot, just like Cross did earlier in the movie, the exact same way, it's still cool, and we can add Sloan to our kills. After one last line to make you feel bad about yourself, what the fuck have you done lately? 
We finally reached the end of the movie. So how action-packed was Wanted? We got 83 kills, 23 explosions, and 5 chase scenes in Wanted, giving us 111 action events over a 1 hour and 50 minute runtime. This makes Wanted 3rd in kills, 2nd in explosions, and 1st in chase scenes. A few short cheat chase scenes, but chases nonetheless. Thanks for watching Action Packed. What did you think about Wanted? I think this movie is awesome. I mean, like, visually it's a ride, of course. I don't find it extremely generic, even though the story is kind of a little bit. I think the visuals really help set it apart. I took a big content break. Um, making content is hard. Um, I try my best. I'm glad this made its way to you. I do have lots planned and hopefully coming by the time you're listening to this. So be sure to subscribe and like the video. It's a good way to support me. And as always, I'll see you in the next episode. Stay safe, everybody.